Hello, and welcome to 5 Minutes About Pulsar. My name is David Deereth, and I'm on the streaming team at Datastax. Today I'm going to be talking about real-time data pipelines with Astra and Decodable CO. Uh, you can look in the description of the video and find a link to a guide that will help you get this entire pipeline set up. I'm not going to necessarily be talking about all the ins and outs of the pieces, because the guide does a pretty good job of, of talking about that. What I want to focus on here are some of the realities, getting this done, maybe even taking it to production, and some of the things that you're going to meet along the way. The idea with real time is you're never going to store the information anywhere because that's just going to take too long to store it and then get it back out. Instead, what you're going to do is work with the data as it arrives in memory and keep it there. Or you're going to carry it along to different components in a data pipeline and let each one manipulate the data and work with it. And then maybe in the background along the way in the pipeline, it gets persisted somewhere, right? So it's a pretty straightforward flow here, but there are a lot of components in here. And uh, I believe there are about four different schemas that are maintained throughout this that are just inevitable to do. So what are the realities of this, of moving to real time and managing all this? Well, I'd like to call out four of those points here, uh, the realities of real time. First is schemas, right? You're moving your information between different components, different objects, many different things. And as you move the data along, the next object is going to want to know what is the structure of the information that it's going to receive. That's the schema. Now, depending on moving between different systems, you're going to have to copy the schema from the previous system and move it into the next system. And thus you have two copies of potentially the same schema, or maybe there's a little bit of difference when the data gets handed off between systems. As you can imagine, this is going to get challenging. What happens when you have a change in schema? What happens when you don't change the schema, but the data changes? And so managing this on multiple teams, you know, in an in a enterprise environment, moving between different environments can become very complex. And I think that's a reality that we need to understand. Debugging. Again, you have many components, many objects moving between multiple systems. So you need to be able to understand where the data is at a given time if it breaks. And when it breaks, ideally you need some feedback. When you're writing an application and you're going to debug something, you're going to normally get an error stack uh, or an exception trace. And that stack is going to tell you the line of code that actually threw the error. And then it's going to give you a history of how it got to that line of code, the other lines of code that it got that it ran to get to that line of code. And this helps you get debugging. When you move over into this real-time uh, data pipeline kind of thing, and you're handing off data between different objects or possibly different systems, the ability to have that fine-grained detail of a line of code probably isn't there. And so being able to debug something when something happens, when your schema changes and no one told you, or the data changed and forgot to tell the, the team about schema, changing the schema, how do you debug that? How do you find the break in the system and then go back and uh, fix that? Changes are all around, right? That's just the nature of this whole of, of technology is changes. Schemas change, code changes, systems change. Managing that change when you are processing data in real time is a reality. And it needs to be written down. It needs to be documented because there are so many little minute details that need to be addressed to account for updates, removes, all those different things. And finally, the separation of roles. This makes change even more complex because it's not just you working in a vacuum managing the entire pipeline as well as all the data coming in as well as all the data being consumed out of it there are many people different teams that are happening to that are all working together to make this a reality everyone has a different role here a different interest and uh, it becomes very complicated when you have such a, a, a complex uh, processing pipeline so those are just a few ideas of uh, 
real-time data pipelines and some of the realities of managing pipelines that can get quite complex. If you'd like a deployment of Pulsar ready to go, you can go to astra.datastacks.com slash register streaming and get a free Pulsar instance up and running today. If you have any questions about today's video, you can email us at pulsarquestions at datastacks.com. You'll reach the Datastax team and we'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. That will make it easier for others to find the video and grow the Pulsar community. If you're interested in Pulsar topics, subscribe to our channel and get notified when any new videos are added. Thank you for watching.